Hey guys, it's Shauna. Welcome back to my craft space, otherwise known as the very messy desk. <laughs> so what I've got for you guys today is I am still working on my marsh flower journal and I thought it would be great to um, make some, I guess, ATC cards or altered playing cards. These are, I'm, they're the same size. ATCs are two and a half um, widthwise by three and a half in length. And that's exactly what this deck of playing cards is. So you can actually make either or. And um, so I'm using playing cards just from Dollar Tree. I have primed these with a little bit of acrylic gesso just to get us going here. You don't have to use gesso. This is what I've used. Um, you could use paint, you could use Mod Podge, you could use um, anything glue and tissue paper you could leave it um, if you leave it uh, I might just sand it just a little bit you can use one of those little like sanding blocks uh, or just some sandpaper a nail file whatever you have uh, just so things will stick to it a little better and I actually kind of like the back of these because it goes uh, okay with what I'm working on but if you wanted to cover the back you could cover it in paper you could cover the front in paper however you want to work um, so I've got mine already. I am not so keen on having the cards show through, like the card pattern. So I plan to cover most of that up and that's why I've also started with some gesso. Um, so I think I'm gonna work on some of this background. And um, I've got some Distress products here. I've got some Distress Oxide and Faded Jeans. I've got the Speckled Egg Paint. I've got Speckled Egg Spray. I've got my water, and I've got this one, Stormy Sky. This is just some, um, I guess, Mod Podge or liquid glue, whatever you want to call it, gel medium, whatever you want to use. And then I've got an array of other things over here. I've got some mulberry paper, which is so fun, and I can't wait to put some of this on there. Um, I've got a couple of acrylic blocks. One I'm going to put some paint and stuff on to work on the background. One I'm going to use for some stamps. I've got some of the papers that I've been using in my journal, just lots of little uh, scraps and such. I've also done some die cutting and I have some music paper as well. So I've got kind of an array of things here. Um, some of my favorite background die cuts, these are Tim Holtz die cuts. Um, I've cut out some backgrounds and I thought they would be just super great to go like this once we've got some designs going here. So uh, we'll work on that. I really love this one, uh, at least for this project anyways. And let's just get going and see what we can do. Um, I've got a baby wipe out here because I know this is going to get messy. I also have a paintbrush and a water brush. This I plan to use with the mulberry paper. If you don't have one, you can use a Q-tip and water or a little paintbrush and water. Just your finger and water, whatever you have. I also have a Distress Crayon here. Um, I don't know what color it is. I don't know, guys. It's in the set. Uh, this is the number if you really want to know. Um, okay. So I've got... These are some Seven Gypsies Color Wash. They're pretty old. This one's a Walnut Forest, so I think it's going to come out kind of greenish if I use that. I don't know yet. Uh, this one is like a pastel yellow. So we'll see if I even use any of those. I've got a big stamp here. I've got a couple of clear stamps I might toss in. Um, I think it's just fun to kind of play with what's here and see what we can come up with. So uh, without further ado, let's just get going and see what we can do here. I think the first thing I'm going to do is just put some uh, ink on this acrylic block. And we'll see how it goes. I do have the media mat um, from Tim Holtz, as you can see, but I've got everything all laid out on it. So I'm not gonna put anything on there just yet. Um, yeah. We'll put a little of this on here too. Kind of mix it in a little bit and see how it goes. Add some water. Kind of swirl it around. It's so cool to look at, I just love it. Okay, and then, since I've already splattered this one, we might as well start here. Just press it down and see what we can get. 
Now it's also good to have a heat gun nearby um, to kind of let things dry in between while you're working on them. Of course, I haven't done that yet, so we'll just keep going and see how it goes. And these drips I've got here, I did put a piece of cardboard down um, just to catch any mess that I might make just for easier cleanup. Um, and we'll make this go a little different. Kind of clean it up a little bit here. I love the speckling that it's making. That's really cool. There is another YouTuber, uh, Shanuki, and I will link her down below. She is doing a um, full deck challenge using a full deck of cards and altering them as you go along. Um, so I think that is really fun and really cool, and I might, I might play along here. I will have four already, so that'd be a great start. Um, if you're making ATCs, some people do make them in a series. So like if I was playing with these four and I wanted to do it in mind with my journal that I'm doing, they're probably all going to be the same range of colors and use the same supplies and look like they kind of coordinate. So that would be like a series and maybe something you might want to do. Um, Lots of different possibilities. I think it's fun to just get out what I want to have available and just see what I can create. Sometimes we just get so hung up on it. it has to look like this or some somebody else's look like that or what was that technique again or am I doing this right? You just have to like relax a little bit and just let yourself create. What's the worst that could happen? You completely botch it and you just cover it up and move on. Paper layers. I say that, you guys, and I know, I know. I have a whole collection of papers I'm afraid to use because the manufacturers are no longer in business. And what if they go out? What if I don't have anything left? <laughs> Fear is there, but it's so much fun to use what you have and make beautiful things. And even if they don't turn out beautiful, you never know. You, um, you might just create something that inspires someone else or that somebody else might like or love. And it's so easy to just keep creating, keep learning. All right, so let's see. I, I kind of like that. Uh, Faded jeans. It's so dark. It's turning out nice. Let's put a little bit of this on here. So I'm not sure if you can do this with every ink, but the Distress ink and the Distress Oxide inks, I know for sure. Um, you can mix them with all kinds of um, like water like this, and you can make all kinds of backgrounds. Um, Tim Holtz has amazing videos. He's done some amazing live streams on Saturdays, just trying to help everybody learn different techniques and how to play with these inks and get the, mess, the best uh, creations in your backgrounds and so forth. So if you're not familiar, definitely check it out. There's some of my favorite products to work with. Not a sponsored video, although I would like be so happy if I was asked to to uh, do a video. I don't think I'm quite there yet. We'll we'll just keep creating. Okay. So the nice thing about these acrylic blocks, if you're using one for this kind of a project, is it just wipes right off, and it's so nice. So um, I'm gonna let this stuff kind of sit for a second and dry out. See, see how I did like the same things, but we got so many different effects here. It's really cool. So you could definitely tell these might be in like a series, um, but they're definitely still gonna be different. So I know I want to use this piece here. Not sure on which one yet. Maybe. Yeah, on this one. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a dry playing card and just kind of tear around. I want this bottom piece because I think it's really cool. And we'll let that piece stay all in all here. So we're just gonna tear. I love to tear paper, so much fun. All right, 
and it's okay if you have these um, die cuts and they, they break a little bit um, when you're tearing them because it's just how the paper would tear otherwise. So that's totally okay. Rip here, rip across, and rip across. Let's see what we're left with. All right, I think that's pretty great. I like this right here because it's kind of a little bit solid. That piece didn't quite die cut out, so we'll take it out of there. This side over here too. Okay. And so this part is still solid and that's okay. I'm not too worried about that. I think I might um, actually just kind of dip this in some of this that's still sitting here. Can share a little bit. That's kind of fun. Let's maybe take a little bit of this one too. Okay. So I have some of these stamps. Um, let's see. I have a big mess. <laughs> and I've got this big stamp. I've seen a lot of people using a clear stamp that has all of the... Uh, like fonts and scribbly text on it. This is the one I have. It's from Stamping Up. I don't know the product number or which collection it's from because that part of the label tore in storage here, just in use and storage of the product. So I don't really know, but I do know it is Stamping Up. If you're interested, just give it a little press. I'm not, I'm not inking the whole thing because I don't plan to use the whole thing. Um, so I'm going to press this on here and so we just got a little bit of some writing on the corner there and I think that's pretty great and there's a little bit here too that's kind of fun and once these ones dry a little bit more I think I might press them on there too let's see here so when I cut out some of these die cuts, I kept the off cuts as well so that I could uh, use them in a background or something. Ooh, that's fun. I like that. We'll just keep going with that on here. Do it again. And again in there. Kind of pretty almost looks like a a music paper but it's got words <laughs> okay so actually i should run this across here just clean it up a little bit okay so some of these things that i've created just just while working here, um, if I don't use them for these cards, I can still definitely slip them in the journal. That would be really cute, put on a page and have like some kind of a, a dark background behind it like this. Very pretty. Okay. So I really like this one a lot too. This is fun. All right. That would be a nice color to shine through. Um, if we put up here, it's gonna have a little darker, which is kind of nice, actually. Maybe we'll just go with this one. It's not completely dry yet, but I really like the contrast of that dark blue coming through. And then, um, I had a little piece of music sheet. There it is. 
So I think I'm gonna put this down here. I'll use some of this glue here and we'll just kind of paint it on. And you can put this on any which way you want. You can put it crooked, you can put it straight, you can put it anywhere. Um, I kind of like it here at the bottom. I'm just gonna tear that a little bit. And then I'm just gonna glue some over it so it stays there. And now my ink is going to blur a little bit by this, but I'm okay with that. I think it, I think it kind of adds to the background and is really fun. And now we could also um, ink around the edges, which I think I'm gonna do just a little bit here. Got some walnut stain. And uh, it's mostly dry here, still a little bit drying, but I'll just put some of this around. And it is gonna smudge in because it's on top of this other stuff. But I'm okay with that. I kind of like that smudgy melted paint kind of a look. And some of this is going to be covered up anyways uh, with the, the next layer. So I think what's so cool about ATCs and ultra playing cards is just the layering that, that takes place. Um, you get a lot of your fun looks just by the layering making it look a little bit worn. Some of the stuff when you layer, you will cover up. Um, I've watched a lot of other videos on YouTube and other artist work and some of the stuff you just do it and then you wind up covering it up and, and that's okay. It's all just part of the process. trying to decide if I want to put something else back there first. Let's see. This piece back here might be kind of fun. And I'll ink this too. Just tore it out of this page that I had that was K and Company. And it's got some blue there. And so what I'm thinking about doing here is just putting it like, it's like right in there. Hmm, maybe I don't like that. I don't know. I think maybe this one, I might just let it be. I'm gonna put a little blotch of that back, back right there. Okay. I think this one, I might just leave like this and maybe put a butterfly or something up here because I'm really liking the look of this one. So, What did I, there it is, there's the paintbrush. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and paint some of this with some, some glue. You can use any glue that you want or that you work best with. Um, this is just some collage medium. Uh, you can also use watered down uh, school glue or Elmer's glue, tacky glue, uh, whatever, glue stick or whatever works best for you. Um, in a project where I know I'm going to be layering, I like to have this liquid glue so I can just kind of paint my way through and um, know that it's going to stick. Okay. And it's fine, perfectly fine, to um, let stuff hang over the edges. You can leave it there as part of the aesthetic or you can trim it off once you're done here. So. I really like how this one's turning out. Okay. 
and Shinoki and some of the other YouTubers that are doing the full deck challenge um, are punching holes in them and keeping them on a ring. I'm gonna put an eyelet in the, the left hand corner and maybe put a little charm or something, but I don't think I'm gonna put them on a ring because I think I really want this one to go in the journal that I'm working on. But it does sound really fun to do the whole deck kind of see how what different techniques you can come up with and uh, the different things you can uh, make on this tiny surface. All right, now let's find our friend to go on here. I could do this one. I'm gonna maybe tear this just a little better. Wow, I haven't even been working here for long and my fingers are already covered in ink. <laughs> I've always been kind of a messy painter. Never fails. I get my hands in my work very quickly. Okay, so this has a little bit of shimmer that was on the cardstock from the manufacturer, which of course I love so much. Okay, I think that is really pretty. So I'm just gonna ink up the edges of this one with some walnut stain. Make it match in just a little better. All right, then kind of glue this guy here. Now, sometimes I like to kind of crimp the edges, just kind of fold it a little bit, and then when I glue it down, it will still kind of have this little bit of a, like a bump, so that it's not laying completely flat. And I think that's kind of fun. It kind of plays on the fact that this is like a, maybe a 3D image or something, but it's still glued down there. You could put some pop dots underneath the wings or whatever you want to do, but uh, I'm just going to stick with this, this glue here because this is what I've got out. Okay, and I'll just kind of puff this back up a little bit here. So that's going to dry clear, and I think this one is just really pretty, really easy and pretty. Okay, so now we'll just keep working. What, what are we going to do on the next one? I've already got some ink. Maybe we'll go around the edge here with some other ink. I have some cool little pages, little pieces that I torn off this page. Um, and it's kind of a doily with like a glittery flower and I really love this one. We could actually tear this one down just a little bit smaller too. And I like things that kind of run off the page. I think that kind of makes it look uh, fluid and continuous. Kind of gives some different interest. So that one could go there, but I think maybe we want some other things underneath it. Um, let's try some of this fun uh, mulberry paper. So I have this one, and I'm just going to spray it just a little bit here, help make it a little more flexible with what I want to do. So I want to leave enough room that I can tear off the edges. So let's tear this one here, and when you're tearing it, you want to tear so that the fibers can kind of stick out and be fuzzy-like. See how that's kind of like a, almost like a cotton candy wisp. And that is what you're looking for. I remember several years ago, we used to do tear bears out of this mulberry paper. And that was what you wanted was this fluff so that it looked like it was a fuzzy little bear. Okay. So we'll leave that there. 
and it's okay that it covers our ink. Like I said, some of this stuff, it's just you do it in layers. And I'll go ahead again and just tear this. And since I've gotten it wet, it's really fragile and it will just easily tear across. And I love the little fibrous pieces that it leaves behind. Okay, so that's kind of fun. You can see the, the ink and stuff behind it. So we'll go ahead and give this a little glue. You can also do this with Mod Podge. You can use your uh, decoupaging fun materials like uh, decorative napkins or tissue papers to cover these cards. Anything goes. So like whatever supplies that you have or want to use, experiment with, perfectly fine. Lots of great fun. Okay, let's see. I wanted that to be just a little bit straighter. Boy, what is going on? There we go. That ink kind of reactivated with the water of the tissue paper, but that's okay. I think when it dries, it's gonna be really fun. And I think I might spray a little more of this speckled egg on top here. We get a couple more colors coming through. All right. So this one was another one of those um, die cut backgrounds that I cut out. And I just folded the little card in half and used the die cut. It was a thin lit die. Uh, this one in particular, one of my absolute favorites. You don't have to use die cuts if you don't have any. Um, if you had like paper punches, you could just punch a whole bunch uh, on, a, on a small area and kind of make some little peekaboo backgrounds that way. That would be fun. Let's see, I think maybe I just wanna do a few of these. I think maybe we'll cut it off right here. And when you use these, these are so cool because they just pop right apart. Okay. And then, um, I think I want to do this one again. And we'll just stamp it on this piece here. It's kind of fun. And then I also have these butterfly stamps. I'm not totally sure where they are from because uh, they've just been around. But if I can open it. All right, so these are the acrylic stamps that I'm gonna use. I think I'm just gonna put this one like on a corner over here, kind of going across. And I think I'm gonna try this one in some of this faded jeans color because I'm wanting to bring out that, that blue see how this does. Yeah, actually that looks really great. So you can see kind of off the page and that's okay. It just looks like it's going to fly away. 
And the pieces that we're going to use are down here anyway, so. Okay, and then I want to darken up that cardstock just a little bit. And be real careful of that butterfly area. Just rub this walnut stain around here. What's really fun with these uh, altered playing cards is you can do as many or as few as you want at one time. So, um, you know, maybe you only had the energy to do a small project for today, so you could do one. Um, or you figure, ugh, I got all this stuff out, I just want to get a bunch done. And you can do, you know, four like I've got here. Or you can do as many as you want to do. What I think is really fun is if you um, have a group of friends that you could say, you know, you're all going to use the same supplies and then see how they turn out because everybody's, I guarantee you, will turn out differently. Okay, so this one is going to cut off a ton of that butterfly, so we're not going to see most of it anyways because I'm just going to glue it like that, but I think you'll know... Um, or we could go off the page here just a little bit and savor some more of it. Hmm, decisions, decisions. No, I think I kind of like it. Well, maybe I'll go like this. Okay. And that's just a piece of that paper fiber back here, but you can see it, it looks like it's a, a line or something on the front there. These paper fibers coming through is so fun. I think I kind of like it like this, actually. For whatever reason, I'm really drawn to this corner. I kind of like it. Okay, so let's just put some glue on the back of this and we'll cut off whatever is extra. And we could um, use some of the excess on another page or another piece. So we'll just paint some of this glue on here. You can also use your Project Life cards or uh, printables with these. Um, I just have a ton of paper in my stash already, so I, you will rarely see me use a printable. I hope someday I can get my own paper stash down enough that I can use some of these beautiful printables I keep seeing, but for right now, I am doing my best to use up some of the papers that I have built up this collection of. Um, it's not to say I don't keep buying more because when they're on sale and they're super cheap and they're so pretty, I can't help myself. I have a paper weakness for sure. <laughs> okay, so now we could actually just wrap this around if we wanted it to continue onto the back side. Um, I'm just going to cut it off because uh, I don't want to do that. I just want to keep it black, uh, blue on the background. So sometimes it helps if you just turn it over. You don't have to see what you're cutting off. <laughs> and there we go. See, you can still kind of tell that's a butterfly. And then this one here is ready to go on the next page. So we could actually put it down there if we wanted to, whatever. Um, we can still add to this some things. We could put this little flower here in the corner. That's kind of pretty. Actually, I think I kind of like that. So, since that is still drying, we can lift this just a little bit because this is on a brad. So I'm just gonna lift this and put these little brad flaps down behind there to help hold it on. Maybe. Huh. Fine detail work, you guys. Fine detail work. My goodness. Okay, there we go. I think I got it. Not quite as in the corner as I was hoping, but we can put um, a little bit of glue behind there if we need to. But I think that's really pretty. So there's another one. And 
let's work on this one here. Let's see. What can we do with this one? Well, let's give a little bit of ink. Ink is always a great place to start, you guys. <laughs> At least in my opinion. <laughs> it's messy, but it's so much fun. And maybe this one, we'll put those, uh, the word stamp directly onto the card. Since I put that gesso down, it should be able to just go right on there. So. Ooh, that could be fun. Could put that over there. This, mm, I don't know, maybe not. We'll see. All right. Get some of this ink. And I'm just gonna stamp this right on here. Oops. Right off the desk it went. Ooh, that's kind of fun. I like that. Okay. And see how our background really is pretty light? Um, but so much fun when you just keep adding layers. Layer after layers. I'm gonna add that. Maybe we'll just put a couple little buttons or a flower or something at the bottom. some glue on here. And if you're a person who likes to play with like uh, lace and trims and whatever, you can definitely feel free to add those. Um, this is a really great project for that kind of medium as well. There we go. That was just a piece that I tore from uh, the, one of the pieces of printed paper that I've got here. And since this one already kind of has some, so much things going on, I um, don't really know that I want to do too much more to it. I thought I had some cute little, cute little buttons somewhere. There we go. Got this cute little bag of stuff here. These are fun. Whatever kind of uh, embellishments you like to use, you can easily add. Like if you like these little clothes pens, we could we could pin one here, and that's kind of fun. Um, if you like brads, you saw how I did that one on the other side there. This, since it's a doily, I think it'd be really cute with some little buttons down here at the bottom. I think I'm just going to use three and maybe put them right here. One. Just like that. Just a little strip of three there. And we could run a little bit of some walnut ink over it uh, to make sure that it, it kind of blends in with the rest. But I think that's how that one's going to look. I'll glue those buttons down in just a bit. But this is how it looks. And then we've got one more to do real quick. I think on this one. I want to use this piece of mulberry paper. It's a little darker, so I'll just spray like I did before. Make it fairly fragile. And then just tear kind of 
kind of gently trying to keep as much of those fibers on there as you can and now with these these little pieces like that you have this little tiny piece this is fun for making the clusters you could put this like in the corner under something um, underneath your buttons underneath the little a little saying or uh, whatever helps you get this texture Eek. and when you have glue all over your hands it sticks to you too so let's see so again just kind of gently ripping across oh that's fun look how dark and neat that is and then we could contrast with something like this or we could put something like this one down but then you lose all of your fibers and that's no fun I've got this little piece here oh I think I kind of like that actually that's kind of nice All right, so let's ink it, and then we'll glue it down. Oh, and I had this. That just doesn't really match. We can put... No. All right, well, let's just glue this, this down while I ink it real quick. I'm really try to darken these edges just a little bit. I did not glue down that mulberry paper, so I'll do that real quick. Okay. And actually, before we glue that down, let's try to get some of this at the top of the card. Then we'll have it peeking out one more element of texture here okay I'm not gonna see a lot of that but I think it's fun to still have the, the texture in there so just put some glue in this mulberry paper again getting our hands all nice and sticky This one down here. And if you're trying to move this like I am, just be super careful because this mulberry paper will rip. So. Sometimes better to like pick it up and kind of scooch it just a little bit. If that's what you're trying to do. Okay, that feels pretty good, actually. And, um, this guy, like right there, I think. And, I was just thinking something else might be fun right there. Um, maybe a piece of this little background. There's the circly one. Or we could do a strip of this one. Hmm. Let's take a peek what this looks like. Actually, I'll just pull it apart like this. I could put that in over there, over here, maybe. Hmm. Nope, I don't think I like it. 
sometimes less is more and that's okay. So I really like this. I'm just gonna glue this here, I think. And um, it, surprisingly, it's not really what I had thought I was going to create, but I still really like the look. So we're just gonna go with it. Sometimes the project creates itself and you just gotta go with it. Okay. So there we have it, you guys. I've got some either four ATCs or um, four altered playing cards, whichever you choose to call them. Just trim off this excess here. There we go. And I think these are really pretty. Uh, oh, this one has the buttons. I still need to glue, but I'll just set it here. So there's the four. It's been about a half an hour. So we've created four and a half an hour. Not a ton of like mass production, but I still think it's pretty great. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and I'll see you next time in the next video. Take care.